Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, your one-stop shop for mature dialogue. We're going to get right to it. Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. I'm your host, Earl Teamer, alongside my co-host, my big uncle, Alan Teamer. Before we go any further, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment below. Don't, for don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, please. That way you know Dream Team is out there when we upload new content. All right, y'all, we're getting right to it. The Western Conference playoffs. Listen, man, just like the Eastern Conference has been very exciting, man. Mm -hmm. I I'm very pleased with what I've been seeing. Man. Yeah, but the Eastern Conference, not the Western Conference. <laughs> Western Conference is really, really, really. I mean, Eastern Conference has really impressed me. But the Western Conference competition level yeah, is different. really, really impressing me. All right, so we'll start with, um, let's go straight down the line, right? So we'll yeah. start with Utah, Utah and Memphis. Utah. Listen, man. And still. <laughs> There's number one seed, right? Yeah. They got the, the star player back. Right now, that series is tied 1-1, and I am very pleased as a viewer, as a fan, to tune in to all of those games, man. Before we go even get into that, it was some, you know, the, uh, what do we call them? The casuals. Mm -hmm. Oh, that series is going to be low in ratings and all that. It should be subjected to NBA TV. Listen up, man. If you love the NBA, you should be tuned in to the Jazz versus the Grizzlies because yes. that is the future of the NBA. Yes, sir. Yes. If you don't, you got to love basketball to understand the importance of a series like this. Yeah. Ja Morant versus Spider. Spider Mitchell. Donovan He's Mitchell. He's back. And it, I mean, the first game back, he, he looked like he didn't. He should have played game one. Listen, I, we're going to stay away from the controversy. He was upset, and he proved that he should have been on the floor. He should have been one. on the floor in game one. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, with him on the floor and the way he played was. It was crazy, right? It so, was, yeah. So, right now, the series is tied 1-1, mm -hmm. and um, game three is actually tonight. Yeah. So, if you're viewing. Listen, we got. I, I, I'm a loss for words, man, because Jai's last performance was where he had 47 but Donovan's presence in game two was... It was just amazing. Yeah. And as a team, Utah looked really scary. Everybody, I mean, I'm a Laker fan, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm quite sure that my Utah, who I... That's the know, family out there. They know. Check the page. Y'all know. Them we, but, we, but Utah, we, we give them they, we give them they flowers. Yeah. Uh, and, and um, yeah, as a Laker fan, I'm worried about them dudes. Yeah. But... Utah has been, I mean, to me, they're scary. They're the pillar of consistency. Man. Yeah, they're scary. They are. Yeah, people don't understand. I mean, because we're so stuck on what our hearts want, mm. but you gotta you gotta deal with reality. And reality is, Utah looking real nice right now. They yeah. looking unbeatable. They can, to me, their size. As far as on the wings, Bonjanovic and, and Ingles. Ingles and all and the way um uh my favorite player defense, wingman. Royce? Royce. Big Royce O'Neal, what up? And what he been playing in the playoffs? Yeah. What's up, Royce? I've been watching you. I've been watching you knocking down threes. I've been I'm I'm watching. And 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 it doesn't make a difference if the sixth man of the year how his percentage is as far as he's shooting, I don't care because he needs to just continue to shoot the ball. You know what's unique about Utah? We stated all of these things mm -hmm. um, throughout the year in our Utah Jazz Weekly Updates. Y'all can check out the playlist. It's uh, within the channel, but I don't think we ever made this point. They have the ability to beat you win games in both facets they can shut you down or outscore you yeah like this that's rare in the nba mm -hmm. most teams like you can go back to what the early 2000s like the Sac sacramento kings out in arco center with Weber and them they can yeah. outscore you but they couldn't get timely stops you right. know what I'm saying? or you have a team like detroit pistons in 04 probably that lock you down but they weren't known to not outscore you yeah right this team could do both and it's I don't know if it's, it's not weird, but it's like a phenomenon. Like, but if you watch the games, you know that, and that's why you stated that they're scary teams. That's very scary. I mean, if you if you if you are a fan of another team, 
and your team is playing Utah Jazz, especially where we are now in the playoffs, it is scary. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, a lot of people that I spoke to have the Bucks and Utah in the finals. And I can't even argue with that because it's possible. And the casuals out there, you probably heard those two names here at Team Sports. We were tuning in for that because that's great basketball, man. Yeah, that is. But at the same time, don't get it twisted. I can see Memphis. Say it again. I can see Memphis beating Utah because Memphis is another team that we pay attention to mm-hmm. because we're NBA fans. That's fact. And that's why we can give Utah flowers. And if we can give Utah flowers and watching and seeing how Memphis come out and compete every night mm-hmm. with John Morant leading the way, Similar pedigrees, right? Like, Yeah, I mean, if you're an NBA fan, I understand that there are people that are just fans of certain teams. Mm-hmm. But I'm a fan of a certain team, but at the same time, I'll never forget that I'm an NBA fan. Yes. And I can only judge this, not because I'm some quote-unquote analyst, because I ain't an analyst. Mm. What we do here is what we love, We because we love the game. No doubt. Right? And so when I talk about this, I'm talking about what I love. And, and John Morant. But it's open minded. Yeah. John Morant is exciting. And listen, on that, that game two, he 47 points. Yeah. Although, like, a, man, you was talking offset. You you was telling me no way in the world Memphis can win with John Morant having to score 47 points. I can understand that. But just a simple point. That he can score forty seven points. It. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting. Against a great defense. Against a great, I mean, you he was going he was attack he's not doing that off of jump shots. He's doing that attacking the basket. And you got uh 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 Name him. You, you got Donovan Mitchell out there, you got uh Gobert in the middle. Gobert down in yeah. the middle. I mean, come on, it's not many times I watch him attack Gobert and Gobert moving out of his way. Yeah. Because he don't want to get embarrassed. Also, yeah. So I mean that was big. I'm looking forward to the to the game tonight yeah, yeah. to see what the outcome is gonna be. But I'm not I'm I'm not selling John Morant short because I'm gonna tell you why. You wanna know why? Let the people know. Don't poke the bear. Listen, man. Memphis, don't poke the bear. And they, and they got a different. Listen, man. It, it reminds you of the uh, Tony Allens and the the, the Zebos. Yeah. In that era, right? But that's a, this is a different bear. Yeah. Those 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 were those were bears. Those was those was the Cubs. <laughs> this they were team still here, dogs though. They were dogs, but this team here is really bears, yeah. polar bears. The kind that come out to play. Yeah. They're, and they're young, and they they're exciting. I wouldn't sleep. I don't. I don't sleep on Memphis. I don't and either. As much as I like Utah Jazz, it's the same way I like Memphis. And that's why we tune in because it's must see basketball. So presently, they are one one. They're playing tonight. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that goes, man. So right. next up, let's, let's examine. Uh, let's go down to the three and the six. Denver mm-hmm. and Portland. <sighs> yeah, shout out to the MVP, the Joker. Yeah. He. He's nice, man. I, I said it before. Denver, you guys have one. I know you lost Jamal Murray and, and, and a bad injury, and he's out for the season. But the appreciation that, that has grown on, on my end mm-hmm. for, for the Joker. Joker just, yeah. His abilities to just maintain his poise and just. Yeah. Yo, man, he's like a point. A six, he's seven feet, right? Be seven feet, yeah. Seven, seven feet. feet, yeah. Seven foot point guard. The way he sees the floor, examines everything, and and, and, and that's great basketball. I'm not gonna man. say they don't miss Murray, but I'm gonna Murray say does. that Joker makers look like you don't need Murray, but they need Murray. Yeah, I get it. I get what it you're saying. It sounds. I mean, you gotta see the games to understand. Yeah, but but at the same time, they're getting by with what where they've been getting by. Even though they took a big loss tonight, that that was a serious tie. Two yeah. two. It's two two, and. I, I believe with Murray, it could be possibly 3 2 right now. But. 2 1? Nah. I mean, 3 1. 3 1. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, um, but. 
we are talking about Dame. Yeah. And as much as we love Dame, and at times we, me and you talk, and we we feel at at times that Dame is not playing winning ball. It's stats and a lot of points, and um, but at times it seems like, you know. But then he comes back with it, like like tonight. Play within himself. And Play within, it, yeah. And, and then we, the and then, then we got to review our thought that we just spoke about for mm. for two and three hours about how we love Dame, but it doesn't seem like he played winning ball that he can ever win. And if they can, if Portland can play like they played tonight, they're a headache. They're they're a real headache. But with that being said. Dame is who he is. The Joker is who he is, and that's why that series is tied two-two. Going back to Denver, but um, I don't know. It, it's an entertaining series to say the least. With the exception of tonight, it was a blowout. You know what I'm saying they opened them yeah, up. Yeah, that the was third that quarter. was shocking to me. Yeah, that was shocking. To they, me. they cleared the bench and things of that nature. But um, it's it, you know, you know, what makes it so hard about a series like that is the simple fact that you're talking about the superstars, right? In that in that series. And the superstars in that series are all different. Timber, superstars, is centers, is the center is position. Star. And the Portland Portland's. is the point guard. And then you also got Denver, who has a point guard, but he's injured, mm-hmm. as in and Murray. And that matchup between Murray and Dane, kind of, when you watch it from previous, it... It, it helped level out. Offset, yeah. Right. But without Murray being there, it's not the same. Because uh, what's the point guard name that's, that's starting, that's playing? In? Compazzo. Compazzo. He's not Murray. And although he gives the effort, and he he's just too small. Yeah. And, and, and you got to guard Dame. That's, that's too much for him. I mean, you can't even – it's no knock on him at whatsoever. He's a veteran – Rookie point guard. Yeah. And that don't even make sense, right? A veteran rookie point guard. But he, he's been playing in other leagues overseas. And overseas is nothing like what it used to be. You you, you get experience. A la Luca, who we'll talk about later on down the line. Mm-hmm. But Compazzo is a decent point guard. He's not a starter, but he has to start now for the simple fact that Murray's out. Murray's out. But Dane, he's just not a matchup for Dane. But this is the Pickham series, man. Like, although if, if you look at the rosters with, with uh, Jamal Murray being out, most people would choose Portland. But Portland is, has given up home court again because they won game one, but they allowed Denver to come back and get that game three. So they have to win another one in a row. But they 2-2, right? They're 2-2. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. The tie, yeah, they're 2-2. So it's going to be an interesting series. It's the best of three at this particular moment. You know what I'm saying? We'll see what happens. So now they're going back to Denver. They're going back to Denver. Okay. They're going back to Denver because yeah. Denver was the number three seed. Right. Yeah, so. And, um, I, and that's another part of this playoffs, which was missing in the bubble. Because obviously, and we ain't even going to go into that because that's Eastern Conference and that's, we ain't going to go into Miami. We ain't going to go into that. But Denver having their fans back with the altitude, we talked about that in one of our episodes. Mm-hmm. It's a different game. It is. Because today, back in where, – where, where they where, – Played in Portland. They played in Portland, mm-hmm. right? Being in Portland is a different – it's a totally different monster than being in Denver mm-hmm. with fans and the altitude. Yeah. So that's going to – we talked about that. Okay, Can you imagine what it would be like when if the fans is back in the playoffs? We mentioned that in the episode. One of the, I, I believe it was one of the up the Denver updates. Yeah, it was a Denver update. Yeah, yeah right. So, so the, and the fans are back. So they they heading back there. Like we said it before, it's just don't the, forget the altitude. Not at all, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like the twelfth man right there. So we'll see what happens with that, right? But I'm, I'm I up can't against breathe. With that. I can't breathe. It's hard to play in that, man. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, man. So that's two two. I guess we'll transition to uh, who do we have left? The Lakers and the Phoenix Suns. That's presently a two one series. Uh, Chris Paul crying. 
Yeah, and he, he has a legitimate injury as well. Not to say that it would matter, but... 11 straight games. But that's on him, though. You got to figure out a way to win those games. 11 straight games. Lost 11 straight. Well, he was talking about officiating, but that that's not their biggest problem. Officiating isn't the biggest no, problem. The they po- have two size. headaches on the, the opposing team that yeah. they cannot deal with. LeBron Whether going downhill yeah. and AD not settling for jump shots yeah. and actually attacking the basket. It's, it's, it's a total. And to me, AD haven't really attacked the basket like he should or could mm-hmm. you know what i mean and but yet it's still effective for the simple fact that he's not shooting 30 footers and 15 four, uh, 16 footers for shots he's actually trying to get it closer to the basket which at his height there's no way they can do that and then there's and although for the phoenix suns their center Aiden. has been playing a great I mean if you look at his shooting percentage for that it's crazy it's crazy that that's history like yeah. you know what I mean it's not like he taking a few shots he's he dom- he dominates the game it's a bunch of bunnies though like they setting them up perfectly but he's finishing you know yeah what I'm but right. you know what I, I think it's a game I, I I don't think we really understand it especially being um Laker fans we really don't understand it but I think that the watching Phoenix Suns all throughout the season and seeing how their shooting percentage from three is, if you can get them focused on not shooting threes and giving the ball to DeAndre Ayton for twos in the paint, I believe that would be great for your yeah, your your game plan. Definitely beneficial, man. So yeah. Right now they they're down two one. They play tomorrow. Um, they're coming off of. Uh, Game three loss where the final score isn't really indicative of how the game went. They got dominated. Yeah. Yeah, that in the second half. Yeah. Though, it was just a half. And and to me that that you know, I watched all the shenanigans that was going on during that game where you had um LeBron James laughing and playing around with with, with Crowder. And early it looked nice, but to me, that lack of daisicalness of playing around allowed Phoenix to get back in the game. Yeah, and you know what? Championships teams don't do that. Nah. So, they're, they're, so the Lakers need to get themselves together. And it's starting with their leader, LeBron James, who I am a LeBron James fan. Yes, I am. But I will give it up and give it to him when it's time. And all that playing around and, and all that, that, that's not focused for a playoff team. Nah. To me, uh, because that game was supposed to be finished at the end of the third. It, right. At the end of the third, you're supposed to not still keep their foot on their neck. And you, as the leader, decided to start laughing and playing around. Okay, you got a, a little underhanded uh, layup. layup, which wasn't an and one or anything like that. But after that, it was pretty much nothing else. For, you know, because... You, you set the tone with, if you watch, the laughing, the fact that he's trying to be physical and all that. Then that leads right on into Booker having the dirty play, which I agree, which is a dirty play. And there's no, there's no room for that in our league. When players is in the air and you take two hands and some shoulder to push them, it doesn't make, to me that just don't make sense. So he was he was definitely he had fouled out already, but it, it, being ejected was 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 definitely needed. And Phoenix Suns, um, all um, all season I respected Chris Paul, Booker, and what he had developed there in Phoenix. But that mindset of how they ended that game with that dirty nonsense and complaining and crying and carrying on it's not necessary because I don't. Although it, I might be a little biased because I'm a, a Laker fan, but to me, there's none of those plays that Chris Paul is complaining about deserved for him to get a different call than what, or, or even a call. Listen, man, sometimes you search and when you see that your back is against the wall and you may be uh, outmatched. You know yeah. So he, you know how it goes, man. When the game is over, you got to play, you know, be witty and hopefully they're No, I don't know too many superstars that do that. Listen. Everybody vying for calls, man. 
trying to do something. Vying for calls yeah. is one thing, but you don't you don't turn to complaining and whining and crying for stuff that didn't happen because when the videotape is what it is. Well, Just because you flop don't mean that we're going to give you a call, bro. Well, Phoenix Suns, you got something to look forward to or something to be excited about, and that's the fact that DeAndre Ayton is balling. And shout out to Cameron Payne, man. Oh, yeah. He's been balling, man. Oh, yeah. I, I, and, I, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, I'm sitting there saying, well, if, if Chris Paul can get healthy in this series, then they can get really get going. But then I'm looking at what Payne bringing them. Simple, the bringing simple, that pain. The simple fact that KC, uh, the CP3 can't get on the floor because of his, you know, he's struggling with its injury. But he's pain is bringing what I think more to the game, and it sounds crazy than what CP3 brings because I'm watching them set players up for easy buckets and assisting to them. I'm watching them knock down threes. I'm watching his speed and his ability to go get by his man, to break the defense down, to get into the paint. I'm watching him do all of that. And as great as Casey, uh, as CP3 is, I keep saying Casey, but CP3 is, I see him not really, when he do break you down, he's, he's pulling up for the short mid-range shot. I'm watching this guy create shots for other people. Nah, he, he definitely does, but but with CP3... I'm not saying he is CP3, yeah, yeah, yeah. but with the little minutes that they're getting from CP3 and then what he's giving them offensively, uh, um, Peyton, not Peyton. Pain. Pain. Um, I can't, I can't, I can't knock it. No, I can't either. He balling, man. Look, yeah. look, we'll see what happens. Like, they're down 2-1. They don't have much experience on the roster. Right. So... I'm not going to call it because... Tomorrow they play. Yeah, so they if they don't figure it out tomorrow, they might as well just pack it up. But um, well, is it because hopeful wishing, hopeful for me as a... And I, listen, I, w- I refuse to sit here in front to my... The dream team is out there, man. Exactly. I would hate to front to y'all. I'm a Laker fan. I'm a, a, And why is that? Because I'm a LeBron fan. And I want to see them be successful. And the and that's the thing about this series with Phoenix. If I felt that a lot of teams should be wanting to jump on the Lakers because they're not ready yet. And with them not being ready yet, I think that helped with Chris Paul being hurt. That it made it easier for them as far as being positioned to win these games. But if they can get past this series and and move on to the next series the more they move on the better they're gonna be so that's what I, I i believe if we look into if you go back and look into the episode i was talking about how get them while they down get them while they down but now nah, you don't now nah, the, they're starting to get into form and that's quick not, and that's what happens with a LeBron James fan. Me and you have both talked about we're not going to judge drum, um, Drummond um, presence until LeBron get back. And I think he done had two to three double doubles since. Now nah, he balling, man. Yeah, and I mean well, he's not a superstar, but he's doing that dirty work. Yes, he he's doing his job, man. Yeah. So presently the Lakers, like I said before, up two one. They play again tomorrow. That'll be game four. And that'll lead us to um, the other team in L.A., the Clippers, who are presently playing. Flippers. The Dallas Mavericks. They found a way to pull out game three, which they needed desperately. But, so kind of shout out to them. But it, they, That was a very impressive but not impressive because, you know what, it took a damn near perfect game from Kawhi Leonard for them to get that win in the middle of a game where – um, 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 Luca. Luca was struggling. Mm. I mean, it took a day. This at one point, I remember them. The now the the analyst saying that Kawhi Leonard has missed one shot. It was like eleven for twelve from the field, and that was mixed in with with threes and twos. Yeah, but he had missed one shot during the game. And then um, 
and and Paul George was shooting over fifty something percent from the field, and it took all of that for them to win by ten. Yeah, man. With a, with when Dallas struggled. Yeah, but to the Clippers' credit, they did come down from being nineteen. 19. That was yeah, because so I'm like Dallas need to be reprimanded on that point too, because you had it. Although it was the first quarter, you yeah. came out grinning, smiling, playing around, talking trash, down, and then when they got physical with you, now you became cry. My babies. shoulder hurt. I'm not listening to that, man. No, I'm not trying to hear that. I'm not. You get it together, Luca, because you know what? If you lose this series, it's like blowing. You waited till like a minute and something left to go in the game to start doing your step back and. Step back three that was caught and that been causing problems the whole season and you started making them shots but it was too late yeah a little too late that's it listen so but you when those shots start falling I didn't see you grabbing your shoulder then when you was going and trying to force your way into the paint like you can jump over people which you don't do and you mix them up you don't know what they and don't. And make everybody else around you better. At times, I believe as unselfish as he is, mm. he becomes selfish at times in the game. Oh, without a doubt. Yes. Listen, I'm not about to sit here and cape for him. He does. Mm. He forgets about his. It becomes as if he's out there playing in Dykeman. He's yeah. just playing for the crowd. Right. Wants to look good. Mm-hmm. Taking shots that's not. Uh, but I'm not impressed with shooting. What's one the point guard that come points. off the bench for them for Dallas? Um, Brunson. Brunson. Brunson comes in a lot and calms sh- stuff down mm-hmm. that <laughs> that 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 he has took out of control. Yeah. You know, and not for nothing. We talking about Dallas, and it seemed like to me that they they had had the Lake uh, the Clippers um number, right? Because why do I say that? I say that because they, they beat these dudes by 50 during the season. I don't care that Kawhi didn't play. That's just one dude. Like you guys said, when Sad was here. Okay, that's just one dude. They lost by 50. But that's just too much. And when they come to play, uh, unlike yesterday, after the first quarter, before the first quarter was ended, because before the first quarter was over, they was up by 20, and then they let them come back before the first quarter was over. Yeah, so that didn't say, and that didn't say much about their coach because he took Luca out. out the game and left him out way too long. Does it sound familiar? Kind of like game two, New York Knicks, Atlanta Hawks. It's, same, same thing, same, yeah. Uh, and, 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 it's, and the ironic part that you mentioned that is that the, the simple fact that Atlanta drafted Luca. Yeah, yeah. And, and then traded him to Dallas for Trey. For Trey. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, oh, here you are. The coach is making the same silly mistake because that's what it is. It's a mistake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the show, Ben. So Dallas fans, players, whomever, whoever's listening or watching, you don't win tomorrow night. You in trouble. You in trouble. But I, I really even believe. with Ty Lue's shortcomings as a coach. They have two perennial all-stars on that team with Rondo. Mm-hmm. Don't give them light. No. If you want to win this series, you have to win tomorrow. And if you don't, it's over for you. Yes, sir. That's how I see it. Dallas is on a must-win game, and they're up one. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, yo, we get on AD a lot because we just spoke about the Lakers in the pre- previous uh, segment. Poor Zingas. You're getting the paint, man. Get your butt. You're seven f- I'm sorry for screaming. Sometimes we blame Luca for his absence and not setting no, up. Now no, I see why I watch, sometimes I, he's I, like, I've been whatever, watching. Man. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't understand. You, you got midgets physical. on you. The the uh, um the I'm Clippers is not playing their bigs. They're going small ball a lot, and you can't. You're seven feet one or something like that. Something like that, and when the wingspan's crazy. But you got athleticism for a seven one. You can shoot from the outside and all that. But that's not all you do. Man, I'm done. I, I can't even, because I'm about to start. I feel you. You're just get in the paint, man. Is, so. Get in the paint. No, get in the paint and go to the rack. That's true. Because he get in the paint and pull up for a jumper in the paint. No, you're right. 
he, with he, somebody on him that's six five. Yeah, he, he got to play man. playing defense against him. He got to step it up, man. Because if he does, it's, enough. It's not even a, a series at that point, man. Because like you said, the Clippers need just about perfect performances from. Uh, the stars would happen to be Paul George and um, yeah. Kawhi Leonard. So we'll see what happens, man. We just went top to bottom. The Western Conference, the first round has been hella exciting, man. Like we said, we got Memphis, Utah, Lakers, Phoenix, Portland, and uh, Denver, and Clippers, and uh, that was Mavericks. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens, man. Very entertaining series. Yes, the, we, the West and and. The entire the entire playoffs has been exciting, man. Oh yeah, all of it. We talking man. about the West right yeah, now. Yeah, the West yeah. has definitely been exciting, man. And uh, I can't wait to see what happens, man. There, with the exception of maybe one or two series, some of them seem to be pretty much over. But mm-hmm. with that being said, it still has been exciting basketball, and we'll see what happens, man. Anything else you need to add? Lakers and five. Lakers and five. All right, that's the yeah. only prediction you're making, right? I, yeah, because you know when you look at Miami, I, like I told you, it depends on. I mean, if, I mean not Miami, um, uh, Mavericks. Yeah. If, if they don't win this next one, they in trouble. They are. And then when you go to Portland and and Denver being tied, we don't know how that's gonna go. And even with, as much as we love Utah, shout out to Utah Nation out there. We just we, we got a dynamic player like Ja. You just don't know. Yeah, you don't just, know. Yeah, I mean, you as as far as if you're going by the, what the last game looked like, that's one thing. But I think they're gonna make adjustment. Yeah, because home court does matter. That's why you play so hard to get the number one seed. You yeah, remember they did what they one. because my uh, uh, Memphis did what they were supposed to do. All they needed was one, yeah, one. in in Utah, and that's what they did. Yeah. Now they gotta go home. They gotta hold those two games, and then. They, they got home court advantage. Win your home games, and you're fine. Listen, man, and with that being said, how could you not be excited about this, man? Teams who are expected to lose are winning games, and uh, that's all you can ask for as a fan. You want to be able to turn on the television and get some quality Competition. Basketball. Yes, sir. Yes. So this is Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. Don't forget to like the video. Leave and a comment still. below. <laughs> Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when we upload new content here at Team Sports Entertainment. I'm your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my big uncle, Alan Tima. And we out of here. Y'all be good. Peace.